What's going on guys, McGinley Customs here, and welcome back to episode 4 of the Z Modeler Master Series. Now, before I dive into this episode, I want to let you know that I have a Twitch channel now. On this Twitch channel, I will be live streaming, I will be playing games, and I will be just having fun genuinely. Because I want to expand my platform, and I would like to start streaming on Twitch. So my Twitch is on screen right now, and it is also in the description. As well as my Discord has an updated link, and it's also on screen right now, and it's also in the Discord as well. Now, let's begin. So in episode 3, we covered importing, merging, exporting, and export settings. So today we are going to be working on moving, scaling, and rotation. Now, I do apologize for the lack of uploads. I have been insanely busy IRL, and I know that's like, I know you're thinking, how can you busy be busy during this COVID stuff? But seriously, I have been busy IRL. So anyway, let's dive into the episode. So what we're going to do first is we are going to open our Z modeler. Okay guys, so once you've got Zmodeler open, you want to open your file if you'd like. I'm just going to use some boxes and spheres and whatnot in the in the, in the the tools options. So I can just show you real quick. So upon importing your stuff in Zmodeler, you'll see that you can't really move it. You can hover over it, but you can't move it. You're clicking it and it's not moving. Now, you'll see you have a move tool here. If you go to modify and move, and then you click on this and make sure both these boxes are unticked. You can then move it as long as you are hovering over it. Now, if you want to move more than one object at a time, so if you want to move objects together, you'll see we can't move them at the same time, there's no way to do it. What you want to do is you want to go over to select and click quad R, and then use your right click on your mouse and hold it and drag across the things you want to be moved together. Now you can press anywhere and you can move it wherever you want, like that. You also have the options to go into your uh, properties, however this only works with one element in the hierarchy. So if I deselect that, and if I go to the properties tab here, and then if I go to transformation and then position, if I was to set this to, I don't know, let's say about two or 20, whichever way around, you will see that it starts to move once I click apply. You see it's just disappeared. Now, <laughs> I set that a bit too far, but you get the gist. So if I set that to 1.5 and then click apply, you'll see it moves over to there. This is really good to get exact replicas of like uh, converting uh, units to real life to this and it's, it's really easy and really cool thing to learn now we're going to work on scaling now if you're going to be doing non-ELS scaling is an essential thing to learn you really really want to get to know scaling now to do scaling or to scale you go to your modify tab after you select it with quad R you have to have it selected with quad R whatever you're trying to scale then you go to modify and you'll see scale here now, this works two ways. You can, well, it works three ways actually. To scale on all axes, you hold shift and then drag, click, and just scale downwards like that. You click and hold and drag downwards. If you don't hold shift, it will only scale on the X and Y axis as you see up here. You can't do X, Y, and Z, it doesn't let you. It's only X, Y, or Z. Or you can do X or Y. So if I've done Y, you'll see it's getting longer. If I've done X, you'll see it gets fatter. Now, if I do Z, you'll see it gets uh, it gets uh, taller or smaller, whichever way you scale it. If you don't hold shift, you'll see that it just scales on them two axes and it doesn't change the height of it at all. Now, if you go to your properties again and then click scale instead of position, you see you have this. Now the default scale is one. So let's say if I set this to 0.5, it would half this on the X axis exactly. You'll see it got exactly half smaller and I only set that for the x-axis so if I set that for the rest so 0.5 and 0.5 and then click apply you'll see that it scales on all of the axes now finally rotation rotation is a real 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 easy thing to learn however you do need to uh, <laughs> it can be a bit tricky or confusing sometimes depending on what you use it with now one thing you'll know, remember of rotation it will always go around the pivot point unless you tell it to otherwise so the pivot point is this little this little uh, pink square thing here. You can move the pivot point or the world as it's also called by pressing X and wherever your cursor is, it's where it will move like that. Now if I pivot it, you'll see it will go around that. It's like an orbit in a way. Now one thing to remember, once you move this pivot point, you cannot move it back exactly to the center unless you do it exactly like that. Now if you want it to just scale around itself or rotate around itself, as if you were to put a big uh, a screw through the middle and you can twist it around if you know what I mean. What you want to do is you want to go to display 
and then local axis you should see this one here center local axis to object now you click that and you'll see you have a line this is your x and y axis here now if you go to rotation and then go to the bottom right you should see pivot make sure that that is off and then you can rotate it like that and you'll see it just rotates around its center point here of the x and the y axis meeting you can also rotate inside of the properties like this so you select the whole thing again and then if you go to rotation and you let's say i wanted to rotate this 180 degrees or maybe about 45 degrees you, you can do that and then you can see on the x-axis it's rotated and it's kind of gone to a little bit of a boxed now if i do it on the y-axis the same thing 45 you'll see that it goes downwards on the y-axis like that and then the z-axis it should go back and forth if i set that to 45 as well and as you can see it still uh, pivots around the center point you can now see a third line which is showing you the z axis as well now i know this was a real short video but that is actually all you have to know about uh moving scan and the rotation next video is going to be quite a long video it's going to be on the texture browser and material editor uh these are the texture browsers and the material editors they are a long thing to get to know but once you get to know them it is a wall through the park anyway guys i'm again customs Make sure to subscribe uh, to uh, follow my Twitch channel. I'm going to be probably streaming them in daily, if not every other day on there. And I'll uh, probably be most active soon. However, I'm still going to be uploading. I'm trying to aim for daily episodes while I'm back now. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to try and upload the um, the Texture Browser Material Editor video. Uh, I really appreciate your guys' support as well. I see you in each and every video commenting, saying, oh, good work, uh, and asking for episode four. It really makes me happy that you guys are coming back for the episodes and wanting to see this. Anyway guys, I am McGinley Customs and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.